What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsag. I'm doing time lapse from Hack the Box, which is a fun, straightforward, easy Windows machine that doesn't have a web server. It starts out with finding a zip file on an open file share that you have to crack, and then reveals a PFX file, which is a certificate in the PKCS12 format. Essentially, it's just multiple certificates bundled together that Windows likes to do. This is used for authentication, so you can use it with Evil WinRM. However, you have to separate the certificate and the key, so you use OpenSSL to do that, and then you can log into the box. Looking at the PowerShell history file, the PS read line, you can find a different password that you log in and discover this user is a member of the LAPS group, which is a play on the name Time Lapse because it has LAPS there. That's the local admin password solution that randomizes the local admin password every certain number of days. So you read the password off the um, LDAP attribute and you can log in as administrator. So with that being said, let's just jump in. As always, I'm going to start off with an nmap, so dash sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it time lapse, and then the IP address of 1010.11.152. This can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have, looks like 11 ports open, the first one being DNS on port 53, then we have Kerberos on port 88, and this is looking like a... Um, Windows Domain Controller because it's Microsoft Windows Kerberos. We have the server time. If we go down to the LDAP, which would be 389, we can see its host name is timelapse.htb. So I'm going to add that in my host file. So sudo vi etsy host. And then we can add timelapse.htb into it. Actually, we have to put the IP address of so 1010.11.152. And then save that. Then we have port 445 open and a bunch of other like domain controller reports. So the first thing I'm going to check is port 445 to get the host name of the box. So I'm just going to run crack map exec and then smb 1010.11.152. And this should tell us the host name, which is timelapse.htb, but the name is dc01. So we could go back into a host file, so like this. And then put, whoops, that was page down, um, dc01 and dc01.timelapse.htb, just so we have all the penitential names for this box. So the next thing I'm going to do is try a dash dash users flag to see if we can dump a list of all the users on the box. And we can also try like dash dash shares. Uh, I think we can do both of them actually. Does that work? Error enumerating shares. So nothing there. We can try, I want to say this does a null authentication, just putting blank for the username to see if we authenticate that way, or maybe it is a period. Let's see what that does. Let's blank out both username and password. Um, I know authentication with like crack map exec can be a little bit wonky when you test all the things. That's why I always like running multiple tools. So I could also do like SMB client dash capital L to list shares, then 10, 10, 11, 152. And then just hit enter when it asks for a password and we can see the shares. So there's probably a way to do this in crack map exec, but when one thing fails, always move to the next tool. I like double checking everything, make sure two tools have the same result just because you can miss things otherwise. So let's do um, a slash slash shares because this is a unique one. I know the C vol and admin vol, these um, require authentication. Shares is non-default, so it's a good starting point. If we go and ls there, we can see two directories, so it can ls dev. Uh, I think we have to do a slash, maybe slash star even. Nope, just slash. And there is a winrm backup. So I'm gonna do a git dev and then a winrm backup.zip. Uh, maybe it's a backslash we need. We can always just cd into the directory if we have trouble. And then we can do ls on help desk as well. And we see laps. And I believe these are all standard Microsoft documentation things. So I'm not going to, um, well, I guess we can download them if we just um, cd help desk. We could and make sure they are standard laps things but I am guessing they are. And then get the last one. 
Okay. And let's see. Interesting when I download and put the directory in, the directory appears here. Um, but let's see if we run exif tool on one of these documents. Let's try the operation guide. Uh, we see an msip label. I don't know exactly what that is. I'm looking for some type of username. So we could exif tool star dot doc x grep dash i user or maybe name to see if we get anything. We don't get any usernames from this. Um, another thing I like to do to identify if it's a unique binary or not, we can do laps x64 dot msi and md5 sum and then go over to virus total or something. So let's do Firefox and then go over to virus total.com, go to the search feature, paste the md5 sum and we can see the file is distributed by Microsoft. It was last seen eight days ago. If we go over into the details, we can see it was first seen over a year ago. So chances are um, it's not related to this box, especially because it does tell us it's distributed by Microsoft. So let's keep going on and take a look at the zip. So if I unzip the dev WinRM, it's asking for a password. So let's put this over on the Kraken. It's just a box I have because I hate cracking in a VM, especially when I'm recording. So SCP that over to the Kraken and then SSH in. And we can move the file into, um, actually we don't have to move it. We just can go into where I have John the Ripper installed. And there is a zip2 john, I believe. Grep zip2. There we go. Dot slash zip2 john. And then put the file here. So root, I'm going to call this when rm backup.hash. And then try to crack it. So john, the file name, and then dash dash word list is equal to opt word list rock you dot text. Uh, do I not have that? Is it word list? It's word list. And then we can run dash dash show to see what the password was, or actually it told us right here, supreme legacy. So let's go and unzip the file. So unzip dev, put the password of supreme legacy, and it now has a pfx file which is like a um, group of certificates. So let's view the information in this PFX file. So we run open SSL pkcs 12 in for input, the file name, which is legacy dev auth.pfx and just based upon the name having auth in it, I'm gonna guess this is some type of authentication certificate. Um, my first thought would be some type of web authentication certificate, but there is no website involved with this box, at least that we found. So I'm going to guess it's for like PowerShell remoting or something like that. And then ask for a password. So I'm going to type the same thing in, which was Supreme Legacy, and we get an error message. So I'm going to copy this over to the Kraken so we can try cracking it because I'm guessing the password is just wrong. So we SCP the file over, go back to John, and then there is a PFX to John. So we can just grab Legacy Auth, and then I'm going to direct it to the file of um, legacy auth pfx.hash. And then we can try cracking it. So dot slash John legacy dot hash. And then dash dash word list is equal to opt word list rock you dot text. And we'll see if it cracks this certificate. And it looks like it's not instant. So I'm going to pause the video and we'll just resume when it's done. Um, I'm going to run the time command so you know how long it takes. So we'll come back when this is finished. And it took about 22 seconds and we get the password of Thug Legacy. So I'm going to attempt to view the certificate again. So open SSL PKCS 12 in legacy dev auth dash info type thug legacy and I'm just going to put this on my clipboard so I don't have to type it a hundred times 
and we see it is a Microsoft Software Key Storage Provider. We can input the password again and it extracts the certificate and private key. So both the private key and certificate are in this. So I'm just going to use OpenSSL to extract them. We could have probably just copy and pasted it, but whenever dealing with certificates, um, white spaces and things like that, how like each line is terminated, can screw it up. So I always like um, just extracting it manually with the commands. So the first one we want to run is dash no certs, extract the key, and we do no des as well. And if I look at key.pem, we can see exactly what it looks like, kind of near the top of that last file. And the certificate, uh, we just want to get rid of the no des, and instead of no certs, we put no keys. Paste in the password, and I did something stupid. So rerun the key.pem because I overwrote the file with that one command. And if we look at key.cert, we can see what that one looks like. So it's kind of the combined output of the info command. So now we should be able to do evil winrm potentially. If we do dash h, uh, let's see, there is a dash c option and a dash k option to authenticate with keys. So the one thing we don't know is if this box is listening on winrm ports. If we look at Edmap, uh, it doesn't have 5985 or 5986, which is the WinRM ports, but those aren't on the top 1000 ports. So I'm just going to run an Edmap to check for those. So 5985 to 5986, 1010, 11, 152. I'm going to add the dash V flag so it shows me open ports as it finds it. And we can see 5985 is filtered. This is the non SSL port for WinRM. We can see that by just WS man and 5986, which is the SSL option. So when we run um, evil WinRM, we're definitely going to want to specify SSL. So if we do the dash H again, we see there's a dash capital S or dash dash SSL. So let's do evil WinRM dash S dash I 10, 10, 11, 152. I don't know if we need this or the host name. Um, if this doesn't work, then I try the host name next. Uh, dash C, this is the public key, so key.cert, and then dash K, this is going to be the private key, key.pem. And let's see if we log in. I'm not sure if we need, nope, we don't need the username, which is legacy. So now we have a shell in the box. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anything in the documents directory. If we go up a directory, um, we can do like GCI, I think dash force will show hidden files and see if there's anything here. Don't see anything. If we go into desktop, we see a user.txt. Now, when I did this box, I ran um, WinPs and saw the output here, but I'm not going to run WinPs just because it'll probably kill like five to six minutes when instead this is a file you shouldn't generally be checking. It is the PS read line file, which is where a lot of PowerShell output will go. And it's located in the app data directory. Then underneath of that, it is Microsoft Windows PowerShell. Uh, let's see, CD Microsoft app data. Um, I think it's roaming. Then Microsoft Windows PowerShell PS read line. And I believe these directories underneath app data, roaming, I think is part of like roaming profiles. This one will get copied when you log on to multiple computers in a domain. Local is going to be local to that computer. So if I was in a domain and I logged on a computer and this PS read line thing was enabled and I went to a different computer, this console host history would follow me, my user to the new computer. So I think that's how the app data directory works. Don't quote me on that, but... Um, I believe so. And then in this, there is this console host history file. And if we view it, we can see who am I, ipconfig dot uh, slash all, running a netstack command, and then putting a password in. So right here, they're creating a password object. 
and then creating a credential and the user is SVC deploy and the password is this E3R thing. So if we, let's see, I guess we can go back to crack map exec, right? So let's exit out of the Kraken. We can do crack map exec SMB 10101152 dash U SVC deploy dash P put in the password. And it's authenticated, but it doesn't say pwned, so we can't get a shell through SMB. Um, if I try WinRM, I'm sure we can log in with this. So we'll see what this one says. It's trying HTTPS right now. I believe it is. It's taking its time. But we can exit Evil WinRM and try swapping out with dash U, SVC deploy, dash P, Put in that password. Let's just see if it authenticates faster than WinRM. Looks like it does. I'm guessing for some reason WinRM just hung up on it not being able to reach port 5985. I'm not positive there. Uh, we see, uh, let's see, connection timed out. It's not telling me the port here, um, but it says HTTP connection pool, not HTTPS connection pool, and 5985, so yes. It's timing out because it can't talk to port 5986. It's kind of funny because it says it starts off with that. I'm guessing it tries to talk to both. I'm not sure exactly, but um, here we have a shell. And if we go into the desktop here, uh, if we do GCI-force, see anything? We don't. We can check the app data again. So app data roaming. Microsoft, Windows, PowerShell, PS read line. Let's see. Okay. PowerShell. There is no PowerShell directory. So the same thing doesn't work here. Um, it is Active Directory, so I'm going to try running Bloodhound real quick. So um, I always like just downloading the latest. So let's go to Firefox. And then go to Google. I'm going to Google Sharp Collection GitHub. Go to this repo, and then we look for Sharp Hound to tell us what file it's in. Looks like the third one, which is .NET 4.7. So grab Sharp Hound and see if we can find anything with this. So download, save file. Let's make dir dub dub dub. Go there. CP download sharp pound.exe. And we could load this onto our evil win or M profile, but I always have trouble when I do that. It doesn't always work, so I'm just going to download it to the box. So curl 10 10 14 8 port 8000 sharp pound.exe sharppound.exe, and let's do python3-m, HTTP server, and it is downloading. Let's see if we can execute it and not get a .NET error. It's thinking about it. I wonder if it's just running now. I thought we'd have to specify a collection parameter with like dash C. Uh, looks like Windows Defender is blocking it, so um, we could do the next best option and just run sharp pound from um, Python. So bloodhound.py ingester on GitHub. And grab this file. I probably had this in my op directory, but oh well. Bloodhound.py. And let's see. We probably just do user at domain. Let's see, dash C all, SVC deploy at timelapse.htb. That is not it. So let's see, dash C, DC for host. Um, this is going to be 
timelapse.htb dash d timelapse.htb we can do dc01 um is there a dns server option let's see collection method so we got unp let's see deploy dash p that's not the password See, do we have it in this window? Nope, right here. Paste it, and it is querying the DNS server locally on my machine. We have to tell it where the DNS server is. DNS, TCP, timeout. Let's see. Oh, dash NS, name server. There it is. So dash ns 10 10 11 152. So now this should give me Bloodhound output. And DNS operation timed out. Let's try dash dash DNS TCP. See if this works. NS lookup server 10 10 11 152. Timelapse.htb. I am not sure why it is timing out. sudo v etsy resolve.conf name server 10 10 11 152. Put it in here. Then we can get rid of these options. And DNS operation timed out yet again. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on here, but we can just do some manual enumeration, I guess. So let's do a net user SVC deploy to see who we are. And we're in the LAPS reader group. So the LAPS reader group can read LAPS passwords. It's local administration policy for server, maybe? What does LAPS stand for? Um, LAPS acronym, uh, local administrator password solution. <laughs> I wasn't even close, but um, it randomizes the local administrator password on all the machines, so you can't do like pass the hash type things. However, it stores it in Active Directory, and only members of LAPS reader can um, read the password. And the password is in the, I think, like mc-mcs-admpwd, I believe, uh, property of a computer. But we can just do get ad computer star and then dash property star. And let's see. Is it going to force me to pick a computer here? I know we can do get ad computer um, to get this. I think it's running. I think I need another star here to get all computers. Let's see. Evil WinRM. Let's set up another connection. Let's see. Where am I? There's the shell enabled. Here's the command. So let's log in again, get 80 computer star. Cannot find an object with a identity. I just run get 80 computer. I wonder if something's funky with like DNS on this box. Let's see. Laps, get 80 computer, get password. see how does this run get 80 computer dash filter that's near what I was doing okay I don't know 
Maybe the filter object sped it up. Because that's a command I ran before, but oh well. We have this. We can look for um, PWD, bad password count. And right now we have it. We have the expiration time in like a Windows Epoch format and then a password. So it was created 8-19-2022. And, oh no, um, let's see. We want to look for the password last set for this guy. So PWD, ADM, is that a password? So this is when the password was probably set, 10.23, as long as that's the right box. And this is the password for the local administrator on the box, so the red 500. And I'm just going to exit that. If we do net user, um, it's probably going to be administrator because that user's there. I was seeing if they renamed the administrator user. doesn't look like they did. So we can do dash u, administrator. And we could probably do this through PS exec as well. Put in this password. And we have logged on, so. We could GCI-force. Uh, where's the flag? Let's see. GCI TRX desktop. There we go. It's under the TRX users. But yeah, that is the box. If you wanted to, you could also get the lapse password through Impacket. So if we go back to Google, we can do lapse.py. I don't even think it uses um, Impacket actually. Um, there's a Python script. Uh, no, it just uses LDAP. So if we copy this script, v lapse.py, set paste. And then run it, let's see, python3, laps.py, py-i, username, and password. Uh, what? Okay, I guess I screwed something up there. Python3. Um, let's do dash u. Okay. Grab this. Dash p. We should have the password here as well. Paste. Uh, dash d. Timelapse.htb. Unrecognized argument dash i, let's remove it. And here we have the script running and we get the password as well. So even if you don't have command line access, you still have the credentials to an account in the Lapse Reader group, you could pull the password because again, it's just in LDAP. So hope you guys enjoyed the video, take care, and I'll see you all next week.